I spoke to your favorite YouTubers and they told me one thing. Man, that Raiden costume sucks. <laughs> yeah, they're not even wrong. This is the worst costume I purchased out the bunch. Like, if I'm 15, yeah, I'm killing it at the Halloween dance. But if I take off the hat and then flip this back, I look like a rough draft of the new Buzz Lightyear. I look like a reject from Mucha Lucha. Wendy Goon. Elvis the Alien. Two YouTubers that I asked. Hey, what's your favorite horror movie? Or like, what do you watch on Halloween? Well, Wendy Goon, you disturbed, mangled-minded monster. What do you watch for fun, martyrs? Answer me! Well, Gigi, I would love to tell you, but you should talk about today's sponsor first. Oh, jeez, what a guy. This video is sponsored by Omaze. Wanna win this 4.3 million Dollar Los Angeles dream house? It's possible with Omaze. Omaze gives away one of a kind prizes and experiences while donating money to charities across the world. Their sustainable approach to fundraising means that nonprofits can spend less time and money raising funds and instead focus on serving the needs of their communities. Score a modern farmhouse, five bedroom, six bath, home spread across. 5,800 square feet, in-home movie theater, pool, basketball court, putting green, come on! Head to omaze.com slash MrGG and enter for a chance to win. Donate $10 and you are entered for a chance to win. With every donation, you will be supporting the Rebuilding Together charity, which is devoted to repairing the homes of veterans, people with disabilities, and neighbors with low income to help keep our communities intact. Remember, that's omaze.com slash MrGG. The link is in the description and also in the pinned comment. And thank you, Omaze, for sponsoring this video. First of all, I want to say thank you so much, Mr. GG, for inviting me onto your Halloween special. As someone who's watched you for years and it inspired me to get started on YouTube, it really is cool to see and it really does mean a lot. So whenever GG asked me what my favorite horror movie was for him to watch in this Halloween special, I really didn't know what to say. See, because the question I heard wasn't what's your favorite horror movie, it's what movie are you going to force me to watch and review on the internet. And I thought about being mean with this and giving him one of my really weird guilty pleasure movies like Eight-Legged Freaks, which is just strange. Or just trolling him in general by suggesting something like Annabelle Part 7 or whatever. But since it's Halloween and in the spirit of Halloween, I want to recommend the most Halloween movie to ever Halloween. Is it that scary? No. Is it that great? Also no. But every single time I watch this movie, I want to turn off the lights, watch a scary movie, put on a ski mask, and demand candy from strangers. And that movie is Trick or Treat. So Wendy Goon forced me to watch Trick or Treat. Just off the title alone, no clue what the movie was. I looked up the cover, and it hit me. I still have no clue what the fuck this movie's about. But I've seen this little potato everywhere. You can't go into a spirit Halloween and not see nine different versions of this guy. So I don't know if this is some kind of sick joke, but we'll see. Let's watch Trick or Treat. Oh, it's an anthology. So different stories in like one booska douche. And you know what? My opinion, the stories get better as the movie goes on. I'm not mad, Wendy Goon. I'm disappointed. This little button-eyed bunion is Sam, and he is the embodiment of Halloween tradition. And he also just kind of dicks around the whole movie. We can start with Principal Wilkins, played by Dylan Baker, aka can't look at this guy the same after watching Happiness, aka Ed Helms cosplaying Mr. Furley. Wilkins spots out the neighborhood turd, played by Brett Kelly, best known for his role in, you guessed it, Mike Mike 2 Street Ball. <sighs> Wilkins just straight up poisons my boy who proceeds to projectile vomit and die, which I thought, that this was a family film at first. It's not. And they got a nice little fake out at the end, which reminds me of the Father's Day story from Creepshow. I'm into it so far. And then we get to the best part of the film, which centers around dead children. Don't worry, they're disabled. That's what the town said. That's what the town... Hey, listen, it's not my fucking story premise, okay? Hear me out. There's an old town legend where the parents were so sick of dealing with their impaired offspring, so they just paid off their bus driver to run them all off a cliff. Kill six birds with one stone. Listen, if it makes you feel any better. The bus driver didn't even end up pulling it off because one of the kids swooped in, took the wheel, and saved everybody. Except if you remember the first part that I mentioned about the kids, he accidentally guns it trying to get home and they still ollie off the cliff. 
fast forward, we're with the neighborhood gang, and this turns into an old fashioned, hey, let's all scare and mess with the outcast girl, because our parents didn't love us enough, so now we all strive to establish superiority over other vulnerable children, so we can turn around and say, hey, at least I'm not them. Kids suck. Uh, parents are fucking worse. Regardless, the outcast girl gets hurt and traumatized. The pretty boy all of a sudden has a moral compass after she almost breaks her neck, which annoys me way more than it should. He's like turning over to his friends like, all right, guys, chill out. Fuck you, Calvin. You could have stopped this at so many points. Eat a dick. Then the dead kids actually rise to kill them all to add to their dead kids collection. And the outcast girl can save them here, but she makes the very correct choice of telling them to kick rocks and die. The only other thing I could ask for here is a crop dust for the fans. There's not much to the next portion, but I didn't see it coming, and I like surprises. These ladies, all gathering in the woods, start going through a fever dream of murder and tits. And even crazier than that, this is somehow not Ed Helms. Seriously, this is just distracting. How the fuck is that not Ed Helms? That's Hangover Guy. Look, that's him. That's not Dylan Baker. And then we got attractive people turning into angry furries. Oh, jeez, I hope no one takes this idea. Oh, hey, Sam, you raggedy quilt. Enjoying the show. We finish off with Mr. Krieg. He's a lot of fun because he actually goes toe to toe with Sam. Finally, someone tries to humble this vintage football helmet. But I'm guessing that Sam's just gonna be OP as shit. That was dope, but I'm pretty sure Krieg's gonna do that thing where he doesn't finish a job and he doesn't shoot him again. Okay, this motherfucker's crazy. We see Sam's true identity, which is a disgusting pumpkin-faced goblin with cute little arms. Me? There's some extra hoopla, but we learned that Mr. Krieg was actually the bus driver from that school bus massacre, and he was the only one to survive. If that is an ableist, I don't know what is. And on top of that, Sam spares him because the Halloween tradition things. Everything's wrapped up in a cute little neighborhood bow, but seriously, Krieg was gonna kamikaze a bus full of disabled kids for rent money. He should a thousand percent die. Oh, someone's at the door. Oh, fuck. Uh, hey! Guys, you look... damp. I get why this movie has a cult following, and I also get why Wendy Goon thought it'd be funny to suggest it. So no harm, no foul. Everybody go show Wendy Goon some love, head over to his channel, watch his things. He does the icebergs. He does the conspiracy theories. He does the things you shouldn't be talking about on YouTube. He's an insane person. I, I don't know, but I think that's why people like him. So you should definitely go subscribe and check his stuff out. So Mr. Alien, can I call you Elvis? I'm guessing with a name like that, you're going to be suggesting something extraterrestrial. Oh brother, this guy's- Hello, Mr. GG and viewers. Elvis the Alien here. I would have to say my favorite movie ever made is The Witch by Robert Eggers. I love it so much because the entire movie is in old English. The performances are perfect and it all culminates into this super immersive experience. While you're watching it, you're overcome with this unbelievable sense of unease. It's amazing. I love it. I'm sure you've probably already seen this movie, but yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> well, not a movie about aliens. Or Elvis. The Witch. Guys, I'm so proud that you all suggested a movie I've never seen. Give yourselves a nice little pat on the back. Not you, Elvis. Not yet. Because it's possible that I fucking hate this movie. <laughs> Damn, that was a good movie. Good job, Elvis. Before I get into all the tension and the slow buildup in this movie, I wanted to share something that I caught through my watch. It's extremely pointless and not related to the plot whatsoever. You know how the old school people say, come hither. I never knew that if you're like sending them elsewhere, you say, go thither. Which you can't say without sounding like a dweeby cartoon. Go thither. Let me try it in my deepest man voice. <clears throat> Go thither. <laughs> also, side note, people often ask me about my elaborate scripting process. I'll give you some insider trading here. This is what I wrote down for that thought. Thither. LOL. <laughs> the Witch. Nothing like a slow burn to loosen up my asshole. This movie, first thoughts, kind of solid runtime. They really could have dragged their wangs a lot on this one, and I would have disliked it a lot more if they did. With horror movies, I often see expendable characters. You know, the person you hear say one line and you're like, oh, I'm bent against the spread on that death. This movie makes that guessing process tough, and I like a challenge. So a family of seven is banished from a plantation after some religious discourse 
and now they live in the middle of bumblefuck. It's kind of like when Alakai was banished after losing a Titi in a fight. Both moments just as impactful to their stories. The youngest of the siblings, the baby, Sam, quickly vanishes before Thomason's very eyes with no trace. Said to have been a wolf, but some of them not fully convinced. I mean, the audience knows because we're shown the witch just obliterating that baby. Boil him, mash him, stick him in a stew. Catherine, the mother, is kind of a cunt. William, the father, is a prideful coward that won't be able to keep his family alive for long because he lacks skills such as hunting. Caleb, the oldest son, slowly begins to give in to his sinful side more and more until it leaves him in the woods alone after he and Thomason end up separating. And then there are two annoying toddler twins, also some cute animals. I guess this movie was kind of marketed as a straight up horror film, which turned people off once they watched it because that's not what it is. I mean, I thought the same, but after watching it, this is very much a drama to me with sure some horror elements, but this isn't exactly The Conjuring. And hearing Robert Eggers, the director, talk about the film, I think he had to definitely somewhat compromise on the film because he spoke about his scripts not getting picked up because they didn't really squeeze into a genre. But fuck the people who expected something different, I'm just glad this guy got money to make this movie. There is a slow start to this film, but we do pick up when Caleb is entranced and abducted by a witch in the woods. The family's in a panic, but he's unexpectedly returned to the home. However, it is clear there is witchcraft at play, and that's when we start getting into the juiciest blame game. Catherine and the twins are pointing the finger at Thomas in to start and William interrogates her but leaves her be eventually. After Caleb goes into a scripture frenzy, the twins are simultaneously in pain and are clearly under a very similar spell. And right when shit's hitting the fan but then starting to calm down, Caleb dies. And this is where the movie starts to go top tier. I absolutely love this scene outside between William and Thomason after Caleb's death. The acting is incredible, paired with the accents, the grammar, the dialogue, which I don't know, I didn't land at Plymouth, but they sound phenomenal. Ralph Innocent's voice is a cheat code and Anya Taylor-Joy just makes this look effortless. He's indirectly telling her to come clean, even as she pleads her innocence that she's not bewitched. Then shit gets personal, like she's letting them have it and William's boiling inside, responding with cool shit like, Peace thee, hold thy tongue, daughter mine. Like, I just, like, it doesn't sound cool coming from me at all. Listen to William say it. Is that true? Peace thee. I will not. I am thy father. You are a hypocrite. Hold thy tongue, daughter mine. So fucking dope. <laughs> so good. And it does not stop there. Another great scene right after heading back into the cabin, where Thomason is now blaming the twins for their otherworldly situation, because they tell her that they speak with the billy goat which she claims is Lucifer. They're still non-responsive from upstairs this entire time because they're still in whatever trance they're in, but it doesn't matter. Everybody's fucking losing it. William is rampant and continues to drop bars. That's the bill of wife, and I will smite Jonas as Abraham would have done his seed. You fucking psycho, William. I love it. William decides to just lock all of them in a manger? I don't know. They bury Caleb, and William is desperate at this point and begins to confess his overabundance of pride begs for the saving of his children, and everything that is evil is fully at play now. Catherine hallucinates Caleb and Sam while Tomlinson and the twins are met with the witch herself. Catherine cradles Sam and breastfeeds him, then the witch begins to feast on the goat that is with the kids. Craziest part, it then quickly snaps back to Catherine holding a crow who is just ferociously pecking away at her chest. And then it just cuts to black. By the way, it's not even fair, me just describing the scene. That scene it's so much harder when you're watching the movie. And also when you don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. My bad. William awakes to the manger destroyed, the goat dead, the twins gone, but Thomason is untouched. And that's when the devilish billy goat takes William himself. He thinks about fighting back, but I think he takes this as, this is what I'm dealt. This is what's being handed down to me. Take me away. Catherine comes out, obviously not content, and at this point, she fully believes Thomason is behind all of this. She responds by attempting to choke her, but Thomason ain't going out like that, so she kills her mother. And this is where I was lost, because I was taken aback. But now what? The movie can't really end there, and it doesn't. Not yet. Thomason ponders it all and approaches the billy goat demanding answers. And he talks. And they don't show him talking. Thank God this isn't a Shrek situation. I was sitting there just waiting for that goofy ass scene. He's embodied by a dark dressed figure and he basically asks her if she wants everything she could want and she agrees. Signing over her soul I'd assume. So she joins the rest of the witches and she seems happy. And isn't that what we should all care about? They ain't. Although slow in parts, and I won't lie, it dozed off in a few of my watches. But straight through watch, great film. That last third, 
Holy shit. Thank you, Elvis, for that suggestion. Appreciate it very much. Thank you for coming on. Go show Elvis the alien some love. Head over to his YouTube channel, his socials, whatever. And that is going to be the end of our YouTuber horror suggestion trilogy. You're probably watching this not in October because uh, I, was, I was running a bit late with all the videos. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the series. Big shout out to all the creators that helped me out with this. Wang, Wendy Goon, Elvis the Alien. Appreciate you guys very much. Go subscribe to their shit like I've been saying. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Here is your second reminder to please leave a like. Please subscribe because I have more content coming your way. Shout out to my lovely, 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 lovely patrons for always supporting the boy. My recent Patreon exclusive was actually watching Martyrs, which I hadn't watched in over 12 years and I didn't remember anything about it. And that movie is fucked. Also, I got a P.O. box. Send shit there. Gamer Shops, code Mr. Gigi, 10% off. Hello. And as always, I am Mr. Gigi and I am out.